Welcome to Odds.com's Breakdown of UFC Fight Night 172 live by Star Veterans Memorial Arena this Saturday, May 16th, Jacksonville, Florida. We brought our best MMA analysts to the scene here to find angles to get us paid. We got Clint, star of the Die Hard MMA podcast. We got Big Mo from Mo Screen TV, and we got Boston Nick, a.k.a. Mr. Fat Fist, and it's main event time. It is main event time, and we got the big boys in action right now. Let's break it down from the UK. Six foot four, Alistair, the demolition man over Reem, 45, 18, and 0. Morning line, opening line, plus 130. Still there right now at Bet365. Going up against six foot five American Walt, the big ticket Harris. 13-7-0. Zero. Opening line is the same as it is right now. Minus 160 if you want the favorite Walt Harris. Let's start with you, Clint. Big boy, main event Saturday night. What's your move? Jimmy, this fight is so, so hard for me to make a decision on. So Alistar over him at dog odds is never a bad bet. And I got to tell you, his last fight against Jarzinho Rosenstreich, I still haven't gotten over it yet. Neither. I had Alistar over him big in my back pocket. And he made it 24 minutes and 59 seconds with the absolute perfect game plan. And one big shot from Rosenstreich was all it was to destroy all that hard work, Jimmy. He should have won that fight. We got robbed that night. And here's the thing. He's coming off a KO loss to one of the biggest power punchers, maybe the second biggest power puncher in the division. And he's stepping right back in the pocket against Walt the Big Ticket Harris. This dude is athletic like nothing you've ever seen. He can close distance the exact same way that Jarzinho did. He has got heavy, heavy hands. For a big boy, you wouldn't believe how quickly he can close that distance. Yep. He's got 13 wins, every single one of them by knockout, Jimmy. That's the only way this guy gets it done. And he's coming off the loss of his daughter. I have said, God forbid, I feel bad for the person who gets that cage door locked behind him after he went through that. And I'm scared for Alistar, man. I want to take Alistar over him as a dog here because he is the better technical fighter. He's got an extremely, extremely high level of experience. He's got 45 wins and 18 losses. Shit, dude, he's got almost more losses than Walt Harris has fights altogether. Ooh. He's got 23 knockouts of his own. But the problem is... He has been knocked out 14 times. So this is a very difficult fight for me to cap. I feel like Alistar Overeem is one of those guys in the later stages of his career. He's been very intelligent. He knows his chin is in trouble. He doesn't go in there and have a slugfest like he used to and just hope he comes out on top. He's a finesse guy. So if he can use his footwork, if he can jab, if he can stick and move exactly like he did against Jarzinho, he can win this fight. And it's not even close. He can absolutely win this fight by just being the more polished striker. The problem is, at any point in time, if Walt Harris gets off on him, this thing could be over, Jimmy. I have no look on this fight because there is so much conflicting information. You know, Clint, quickly, I know we're going to bang around all of the analysts, but there was we've spoken before about Overeem's drug use in the past. How does that come into play here? How does that? How do you handle that with your handicapping in this There's fight? Horse eating. <laughs> he's off the horse meat. Yep, he's off the horse meat. So Jimmy, I he's almost forty, and my rule is you don't bet a guy who's forty or over for a, unless you've got a very damn good reason to do it. He's not quite there yet. He's got one year, but you got to think that that's taking a toll on his body. The do you weirdest thing he was using PEDs. Oh, 1,000%. You can, you can see him shrivel up over the course of a year or two. Oh. The tricky thing is, I think he got a new doctor, Jimmy. He put that muscle right back on a year or two later. He's not getting popped by the drug tests, but he looks pretty damn good in shape like he used to. There's something going on there, and I can't quite put my finger on it. This guy is Captain America. He is way younger than he should be at this point in his career. All those miles, this is just MMA fights, Jimmy. He's had so many more kickboxing fights. 
that are not being included on this record. The wear and tear on this man's body has got to be right. unreal. And he's a genetic freak, the fact that he can keep going at the highest level at this age. And I, I can't doubt him. I saw him piece apart Jarzinho Rosenstruck for a full 25 minutes his last fight out. I can't step in front of that. I cannot doubt Alistar Overeem. Big Mo. We got a couple of big boys banging gloves. Main event time. What do you think here, Big Mo? I think we're all definitely going to bring up the fact that Walt Harris lost his daughter. So RIP on that. That's horrible. Couldn't even imagine it. <clears throat> But with that being said, you kind of got to put that to the side and think, like, he's going to be mad. He could have adrenaline. He's going to come in. He wants that knockout. He needs that knockout. Um, and I think against somebody that – I think that Walt Harris has very good kicks. I think he throws crazy power. Really athletic dude. He has 76% takedown defense, so not the easiest to get taken down. What kind of shines out to me is, and I know it was short notice, but it just shows that it's there if somebody can snatch it, is the Verdum fight. He got – Verdum got him down easy. And if Verdum and Overeem's grappling's not on the same level as in like submission and stuff, but Overeem is an extremely good grappler. And if he can shoot in on a single and get that single on Walt Harris and have Walt Harris working off his back, trying to get up, he's not technical. So he's going to be doing a lot of posting, just standing up. So that was Verdum on steroids three years ago. Remember that. But then I was also going to say right now they're having a – I'm glad you said that, Nikki one ounce, that um, it's actually – you saw us doing like a stay-at-home drug test right now. You know what I'm saying? He's doing like it's like they're like sending they're they're sending yeah, he's, giving, he's, giving his, partner. he's giving his partner's blood to to Usada so he can pass. Yeah, so Duke, Duke could come out and be on all the picos in the horse meet, you know, saying this fight, and we just kind of roll with it. He could pop afterwards, but that don't matter. It's still money in the bank then. Yeah. So uh, I think yeah. with the technical fighting, he's gonna he can make it boring. Stay behind his jab, just like he did with Jarzinho until one second left. And I think that he can stay away, keep the technical fighting or the tip, like the technical striking, mix in those takedowns. And if he gets on top of you, he has real technical um, ground and pound too. So I just think all aspects over him, especially, especially coming in on dog money, I think you got to go with over him. Wow. Listen, I'm not sure if you know, but over him is going to turn 40 as that fight starts and as that fight is going he turns 40 on the i believe it's on sunday sunday night at around you know Dude, so, i just turned 37 and look at these guns bro yeah you don't find the oc though that no horse made over here either bro exactly the, the ream looked good in his last fight against uh rose's troop um had a great game plan honestly really did and that's what we uh me and clinton both were aiming for his game plan uh, four round, uh, four rounds deep, four minutes in, with about seven sec six seconds left. Um, Rosenstruck put a camel toe on uh, on uh, on on Overeem's face. Let's face it, he split his lip in two. Okay, in half. And, uh, literally. Um, as that fight ended, I'm like, oh, you know, I didn't even think Overeem was done. If you want the truth, Clint, I think Overeem got right back up, and that was actually a yeah. early stoppage. If you agree. I think that was an early stoppage, Nick. Yeah. The it, He got up, and it's only because Jarzinho thought it was a walk-off KO walked that off. the ref called it. Over and stumbled up to his feet, and if the yeah. ref hadn't jumped in and waved, we make two more ticks of the clock, and we and win that yeah. fight. He walked away like he just owned the place, and Overeem was up against the fence, and uh, up against the fence. Maybe, and, hey, was that ref, was the, the same ref that Dom? It was, uh, the one that was drunk the other yeah, I think it was actually Peter. Uh, uh, what's his name? Someone with a P. A P. Or Smoky Drunky is what yeah, we call Smoky Drunky. Yeah. Uh, but after that last bomb that he landed, got landed. I mean, uh, Rosenstruck landed on him. I'm not sure where uh, his 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 chin's gonna be at. And if Walt Harrison, Walt Harrison, if Walt Harris just catches him with one of those, just one of those, Reem's gonna hit the freaking deck. Okay. And I do believe that – I know you guys think that that, um, you know, Anna Blanchard is his daughter's name. 
and uh, shouts out, rest in peace. Uh, I know this is going to be a tough fight for you, Walt, and I do believe you're going to go with the right game plan in there and uh, not let things, you know, carry over. And I like I like Walt here. I think he goes in there. I think he's uh, going to outbox the Reem, and I do believe he's going to take him out within the, within the first three. I don't think that fight goes a distance either way. That's another prop bet I might take, depending on what the odds are at. I mean, Reem almost went the decision in the, in, into this last fight, so we might get some decent odds on that. Uh, but uh, it's Walt Harris for me. Rest in peace, Anna Blanchard. And, uh, Walt, I hope you get this done, baby. So, Nick, would you figure out a way to bring that juice down? What's he at right now? He's at minus 160 right now. Would you, you know, TKO, KO, or how would you, how would you figure yeah, out? Yeah, that'd be by K. Yeah, I would take Walt Harris by TKO, KO. If he went, I believe he wins this fight, he wins it inside the distance. If Overeem wins it, he wins it, uh, either inside the distance as well or by decision. Wow. So, is, uh, Jimmy, if I can compound this problem a little bit more for you, the only thing yeah. is Walt Harris, it feels like he was surging the last time we saw him, but you got to look at his level of competition as well. I know. He Be knocked there. out Daniel Spitz. He knocked out Sergey Spivak. Um, and he knocked um, out Alexi Olenek, who's 42 years old. I mean, the level of competition isn't even close to what Overeem has been facing. Looking at the numbers – Walt Harris, over the course of his UFC career, has landed 2.96 significant strikes per minute, and he's absorbed 2.68. So he is just ever so barely outlanding his opponents. Basically, he's giving what he gets against the mid-tier of the heavyweight division. And then you look over at Overeem, and with that massive record, be facing the best of the very best the heavyweight has to offer, now, though. So he averages 3.54 significant strikes per minute and only absorbs 2.15. So he is outlanding his opponents by almost a full strike and a half. I love Walt Harris, and I'm so sorry for what his family went through. You've got to think about the potential negative that that might have on him as opposed to I'm going to get in there and kill the next man I see. He also got derailed. When he was first coming back from that tragedy, I was very much in that corner of I think he's going to break the next person he sees. But then we had COVID. That fight got postponed. He peaked, man. He was ready to go. They were ready to shut the cage door, and then everyone had to go home. And he's been sitting at home for the last two months. And, yeah, he got back into training camp again. Well, kind of are you going to get that fire back? Are, are you going to get that crazy emotion that you had back from last time? I don't know if Walt deserves to be a minus 160 favorite. No, he does not. You're 100% right. I actually think the line should be flip-flopped, by, but not minus 160 for Reem. I, I mean, I think it should be right now minus 135 Reem and dog money on uh, on Walt. I agree with that 100%. But, I mean, we're, Overeem is turning 40 as that fight goes on. And I'm telling you right now that we're going to see Overeem's 40, okay? Rosenstruck fought, what was that, 12-second knock, knockout to uh, to uh, Nagano a couple of nights ago. Yes, Nagano's a beast, but Nagano's not really known for knocking anybody out on his stature like Derek Lewis, you know what I mean, on his stature the way he did. So maybe Rosenstruck wasn't on that really huge stature that he put him at. There we have the main event, the Demolition Man against the Big Ticket. Right before we put a bow on this video, we broke down all 11 fights on UFC 172 Fight Night. Let's talk about just the main card, all right? We have a featherweight bout, Song Yudong versus Marlon Chido Vera. We got your boy Eric Anders versus Christoph Jocko. We got Danny 50K Ige up against Edison Barboza, Claudia Gedalia up against Angela over Killer Hill, and Overeem Harris. Let's go around the horn here and figure out best bet. One best bet. Let's start with you, Boston Nick. Boston Nick, best bet. You I'm going to go with Ige. Plus odds, I love him. And uh, I believe he is going to show the 145 Edson Barboza, what cut into 145 feels like. And uh, I like Ige here at those plus odds. So, yep. Best, Ige, bet. best bet from Boston Nick on Ige. Big Mo! Best bet. And I think you uh, take a little bit of what uh, Boston said, sprinkle some Ige, but then you parlay that jank with a little Overeem, get a little double dog action, you know what I'm saying? I've been known to do a little double dog action in my day. What that with your dog song? Huh? Overeem. What that with your dog song? 
Oh, yeah, getting real spicy. I like that. Overeem. Wow, you're, Mo, Dude, you're that high on Overeem in this? Reem. Yeah, we're talking about Reem. Reem might be one of my most confident plays on the card. Just because also, a lot of like a lot of things, guys, a lot of things. Something that we can't even imagine. I don't have a daughter. I have nephews and nieces. Uh, Nick, don't have kids. I don't know if you have any uh, nieces and nephews. Clint. You have a kid, so you – how many sleepless nights would you and Jimmy have if y'all lost your kid? You know what I'm saying? So Can't he's imagine, off and turning in bed. Who knows if his sleep pattern's back on? There's just a lot of things you got to throw in there. Is he coming back too early? That's something that could mess you up mentally for years, let alone that didn't even happen. What, maybe a little over a year ago, something like that, a year, less than a year? So I, think you got, I think that's a big, strong thing to put in there against – a uh, a vet, a true, true vet that his last time out, he looks good except for that literally one second left, two I seconds left, whatever. Stroke, especially after after watching him with Nagano. Yeah, but the other, the other I, thing I, I here with Mo. Nagano's a beast, bro. Like, you can't – Nagano knocks people out. He just had a couple showings that if you have, like – I know he's a – you know what I'm saying? I think the reason he went so hard against Jarzinho is is Jarzinho called him out. He said, I want Francis. So Francis was not going to be hesitant on throwing punches. There's no other, no other stronger power than a, than a than a father that lost something. So that's all I got to say. I mean, boom. I mean, you're right there. So I'm just saying those sleepless nights, training, stuff like that, you got to put it in consideration. Both of you guys on, on the sides that you're on from the psych, psychological aspect of what Walt Harris just went through is extremely interesting. And we, no, we don't know who's right or wrong. Nick saying, you know, after going through this experience, how angry he's going to be. How much stronger it's going to make him. I think. Stronger is a better way of looking at it because angry is not necessarily the right term, especially after him being primed for a fight earlier. But – Mo looking at it from this has messed his life up in an enormous way and messed everything up. Everything that he holds dear to him is, is messed and, and off. And, and and how does that help him as a fight? Well, it doesn't. It doesn't help and him. Jimmy, not only, Jimmy, did his daughter die, but how she died. She was kidnapped. You know what I'm saying? So if I don't know if he has any other kids, but imagine laying in your bed wondering if your kid's about to get snatched. You exactly know what I'm saying? A stepchild, but he has kids with the same mother and he that's all, yeah. So I didn't mean to interrupt you on that, but that's just that's just been in my head on that one. Wow. Uh, Clint, this is a uh, I mean, we can look at it from the importance of what we're talking about here. We can also look at it for how Walt is going to handle this, I mean, there's if you need a psychologist to break it down properly. But best look on this main card right now, Clint, is what? So for me, I, I'm going to go with my best bet with Angela over Kill Hill. She was the only bet that I actually have locked in for the Saturday card coming into the live stream. I have since talked myself and roundtabling with my boys here into Dan Ege. I'm going to lock that bet in as soon as the show is over. But the one I was solid on before we got started was Angela Hill. I truly think that Claudia Gadelli is on the downswing. And I think that plus 168 I snagged it peaked for just a minute. And I got it at plus 168. Plus 160, plus 155 in that ballpark. You're still solid. I think you're getting a lot of value on a fighter who's hot right now and fading a fighter who's on the backswing of her career. On top of that, I think me and my boy Mo might have just talked me into an actual bet on Alistar Overeem, Jimmy. I mean, looking at when you when you take out the emotion, when you take out the story, and you just look at the numbers, he is so far and away the better fighter in a different place in his career. They're only three years different. It's not like Walt Harris is 32. Was four years ago, not now. Well, and, you know, Alistar Overeem took Jarzinho's best punch, man. And if his lip hadn't split open – that fight doesn't get stopped, and we win that. He took Jarzinho down twice. We know he's still intelligent. We know he's still got the grappling in his back pocket. And yeah, if he does that to Walt Harris, we saw what happened. Walt Harris Walt got Harris. snapped up by Mauricio Verdum. Listen, Jarzinho and Walt Harris train together, and what, when it comes to wrestling and all that stuff, Rosa told me that 
he couldn't wipe his ass. Jorzino and Walt Harris. I'm just I'm gonna have to think real hard on that one, Jimmy. I think we might be we might be leaving money on the table with Alistar over him here. Uh, course, but I, yeah, I, I believe in the Mo, story. Mo's not gonna be leaving no money on the table. <laughs> He's all over over him right here. I still got a couple days. We got to get by the Wednesday card first. I can still lock this bad boy in. We'll see. Yeah, they're very important. And there's been no move market wise on that fight. None. Wow, uh, what an interesting breakdown of a big, big fight. You guys were great. Uh, very, very, very interesting. And it adds so many levels to it. And I can't wait to watch the fight. Thank you guys so much for your insights. Big thank you and shout out to Clint, start a diehard MMA podcast. Big Mo from Mo's Cream TV in Boston, Nick AK, Mr. Fat Fist in this joint. And there you have it. All 11 fights broken down. I How many fights you guys broke down in the last uh, week? Uh, spectacular work. I mean, uh, what, 35? 30, 35 fights? Uh, man, UFC Fight Night 172. Follow us, odds.com. Follow us on Twitter, odds110. Check us out on YouTube, Odds HQ, because we got the best of the best breaking down these fights. And it's exciting and fun to roll with. Make money. This Saturday, Jacksonville, Vice Star Veterans Moral Arena. Get paid. Come on now. Get it. Get it.